so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. you. And it's indeed a pleasure to be here at DiacareCon. It's like being at my home and uh, with Deepak and Ritu here. I am very thankful for the kind introduction and uh, I am again thankful for placing my session along with my friends. So as we all know, this is a nutrition month. So what I am going to talk about is diabetes specific nutrition because it is always a dilemma as far as nutrition needs of our diabetic patient is concerned. So this is a brief disclaimer of my talk and the do definition of diabetes we all know. It's a group of disorders characterized by high blood glucose level which is due to a defect in body's ability to produce and or use insulin. The word defect is very important as far as my talk is concerned. Now this is a United Nations data which we all know and we are aware of it. Every 5 seconds one person develops diabetes, every 10 seconds one person dies of diabetes and every 30 seconds a limb is amputated due to diabetes. So this is a horrendous figure which we all know. The diabetes trend in India are not behind it and we can see the trend is increasing like anything and we all know and we are all facing this problem in our day to day OPDs. And we are surpassing all the countries whichever are there in terms of newer cases of diabetes mellitus. Now when we see the number in millions we are at a much higher, uh, uh, we are much high placed as far as other nations are concerned. Can you move my slide please it is not moving forward. Okay, thank you. So the rise in diabetes, the reasons are, uh, first of all, we are supposedly eating too much and data suggested that we are partying a lot and eating too much, too much calorie intake is there. Then our genetic makeup is prone to develop diabetes. We Indians are having a genetic makeup which is prone to develop diabetes. We are having a habit of eating and not moving, that is inactivity which is increasing day by day. And along with that childhood obesity, is on an alarmingly high level as we can see and this is a really alarming situation as far as India is concerned. Now mortality we all know is higher with diabetic patients and we all see with this Whitehall, Paris and Helsinki policemen study that the diabetic patients are at a higher risk of mortality as compared to the normal subjects. Now what are the risks associated with increase in HbA1c values? As glycemia increases, I don't need it, I don't need it, thank you. As glycemia increases and there is 1% increase in HbA1c, the associated risk increases. It increases the risk of myocardial infarction by 14%, a 21% increase in diabetes related deaths and a 43% increase in risk of peripheral vascular diseases. So the benefit of reducing HbA1c, we all know. We all know the data from UKPDS and all those studies and we all know that 0.9% reduction in HbA1c results in a 25% reduction in diabetes complications. So if we can achieve that much, we will be benefiting our patients. So what are the long term benefits of controlling the blood glucose level? There is a 76% reduction in retinopathy, 60% reduction in neuropathy and a 54% reduction in nephropathy. So a controlled diabetes is much better than an uncontrolled one. Now to achieve that we need a collaborative management of diabetes. It involves four things. First of all, we need to focus on nutrition. It is the first and foremost thing. Then we need to focus on activity. The education again remains a key to the patient. We need to educate our patient and the medicine, periodic medication and compliance to medication is the fourth pillar which involves the management of diabetes. Now why do we need good nutrition and why it is being kept at the top? Because it controls the blood lipid levels also along with the blood sugar values it maintains a healthy weight, it reduces the medication. If we control our nutrition, we can reduce the medication of patient and it again prevents complication. So the MNT thing which we all know is very important. So MNT is a therapeutic approach to treat the medical condition and their associated symptoms. This is a definition of MNT. Why are the use of a specifically tailored diet devised and monitored by a professional? So a professional is needed for MNT. I want to emphasize this point that a professional is very much required for a MNT. Any Tom, Dick and Harry who is claiming to be a nutritionist cannot, cannot, I again emphasize on this word, formulate a MNT plan for our patient. The importance of MNT in diabetes is because it is a primary prevention to prevent diabetes in those with obesity and pre-diabetes, especially our kids. And secondary prevention in our patients to prevent the complication. And tertiary by preventing morbidity and mortality in our patient. So what are the goals of the MNT? To achieve and maintain blood glucose levels, 
we need to maintain the blood lipid levels also then blood pressure levels needs to be maintained also we need to prevent or slow down the development of complications so these are the goals of mnt in diabetes now we need to address individual nutrition needs for our patient it should be very individualized and we need to maintain the pleasure of eating with the limit of food choices so we cannot divide our patient of the pleasure of eating because eating is a pleasure you all will accept it and eating gives us satisfaction we feel full when we eat what we want to eat but it should be limited now when does the mnt becomes effective now let us see that when we are willing to change only the mnt will be become effective so the patient should have a will to change then patient should receive a individualized mnt rather than giving one size fit, fits all to the patient we need to receive a individualized medical nutrition therapy and it should be sensitive to the personal needs of the patient if the patient is needing specific nutrition we should plan it accordingly so what are the components first are carbohydrates we all know proteins fats vitamins and minerals now the carbohydrates mnt recommendation for carbohydrate because carbs are these days a culprit for many so the total carbohydrate 45 to 65 percent of the total calories should be there we should prefer low gi or gl foods and we should prefer fiber intake they should be more in fiber now regarding protein the total protein requirement should be 10 to 35 percent rather than going on a lean protein diet it should be balanced and we should prefer vegetable source of protein and we should reduce protein intake in diabetes and ckd which is very important for our patients with diabetes and ckd now regarding fat the total fat should be 20 to 35 percent of total calories saturated fat trans fat and dietary cholesterol should be limited rather very limited and polyunsaturated fat intake should be about 10 percent of the total energy intake of the patient now micronutrients are the key components and they are actually required even for the normal individuals but the need for diabetic patients increases much more so uncontrolled diabetes often is associated with micronutritional deficiencies so they should be addressed very well and we should supplement our patient with vitamin c e zinc and selenium they should be an integral component of the micronutrient milieu now chromium potassium magnesium and zinc deficiency they all have been shown to aggravate the dysglycemia so they should be taken into account while planning the mnt for the patient now basic nutrition advice for diabetes patient we need to give them advice regarding timing of the meal and snacks they should avoid long period of fasting or the period between meals so as to avoid the risk of hypoglycemia they should avoid excessive carbohydrate intake as we all know in one meal they can divide it in parts and they can take it but they should avoid it in one meal and they could they should get a variety of high fiber foods so fiber intake is very integral for diabetes management they should limit refined carbs and added sugars the weight loss of approximately 4 to 9 4.5 to 9 kg or suppose 5 to 10 percent of the total body weight plays a big role in control of diabetes as we all know and recent data supports it exercise again becomes very integral along with diet and we should watch the pro protein portion sizes and we should read the food label for hidden sugars which are there in the food particles or food products which are there now nutritional facts the food that are good for you are good for everyone it should be very clear the food which is good for one is good for other and we should eat a variety of food that should have a high fiber and right amount of nutrients we should prefer plant protein as i have told you over the animal protein and we should prefer pufa and mufa so we should control the portion and read the level these are the basic gist of what i want to say now the dietary management as i have told you this is just a recap a 55 to 65 percent of carbohydrate one gram protein on a rough basis per kg ideal body weight per day plant protein should be preferred 15 to 20 percent of the total energy to be coming from fat move up for again preferred and vitamins and minerals are integral to the diabetes treatment plan dietary fibers are very much important so this is actually in a nutshell what should be the dietary management of diabetes now there is always a need of a ideal nutritional supplement for diabetes and we are searching for it so one of the solution which is there is by the british biologicals which are leader in nutrition and they are having their product which is called as d protein so the d protein features complex carbohydrates dietary fiber pufa protein and all the 23 nutritional essential nutrients so it is a mix of all the things which we require in our diabetes patient for mnt so why d protein because it provides appropriate amount of calorie 
it supplies optimum nutrition there is no added sugar to it it maintains the blood sugar level it gives relief from diabetic symptoms by the help of micronutrients and maintaining a balance or energy balance in the body and we achieve a optimum lipid profile with it and we can prevent the acute and chronic complication due to the control of blood sugar values now role of active ingredients what is there it, it contains maltodextrin which is complex carbohydrate and it acts as a bulking agent so it helps to prevent the nocturnal hypoglycemia that is the biggest advantage of it then soy protein isolate which improves the blood lipid profile it causes satiety so our food intake is reduced then there is inulin and fast soluble fiber which actually decreases the postprandial blood glucose rise it, de it decreases the total and ldl cholesterol it delays the gastric emptying and in return it helps in reduction of weight now pufa decreases the insulin resistance it decreases ldl and triglyceride levels and it increases hdl values also vitamins and minerals you all know they provide the optimum nutrition and helps in various factors including reduction of complication now this is the list of uh, vitamins it has and my minerals it has because uh, it contains b6 which is required to prevent diabetes related complication b12 which we all know required to prevent diabetic neuropathy vitamin c to improve glucose tolerance vitamin d to boost insulin sensitivity vitamin e to improve the activity of insulin and reduction of complication chromium zinc and magnesium they improve glucose tolerance decrease fasting levels and insulin level sensitivity so in a uh, in a return it also reduces the cholesterol level now calorific distribution if you see it contains 63% of carbohydrate 32% of protein and 5% of fat the salient feature we see if we see it contains complex carbohydrate adequate protein with low fat now high glycemic index food we all know are high in sugar then there are medium glycemic index food but this is having a very low glycemic index of 38.8 so it is not harming our patient in any manner it doesn't cause any spike it doesn't cause any crash and it doesn't cause craving because it induces satiety so in a way it is helping our patient now it offers cardio protection by the help of monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids which lower ldl cholesterol and in lieu reduces the risk of cardiovascular complication now protein acts as glycemic regulator zinc chromium improve the insulin sen synthesis and sensitivity and that's how it helps in regulating the glycemic control protein again improves the satiety so it, in a way it helps in reduction of weight also with the fibers the indication being pre diabetes diabetes and gestational diabetes so we all know a well controlled diabetes is the leading cause of nothing so we should aim for it thank you